morning and welcome to Triclosan, the facts. Today we're going to take a journey to really discover the toxicokinetics and risk assessments of a well-known product with many unknown effects. We will discuss the history and uses of Triclosan, outline the effectiveness in appropriate situations, convey some important information associated with the toxicokinetic effects in humans and other biological systems, and outline the risk assessments. We will also illustrate why recent research into the effects of triclosan is causing concern and why the United States Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, is considering pulling it off the shelves and Health Canada has called it a priority chemical for assessment. The first patent for triclosan was issued in 1966 to the SEPA Pharmaceutical Company. A year later, the colgate Palmolive Company made the first antibacterial bar soap. In 1972, mass production had begun as this broad-spectrum antibacterial and antimicrobial agent was being used prolifically as a surgical scrub in the healthcare industry. It wasn't until the mid-1980s, however, that the commercially driven industry really took off. Today, triclosan can be found in more than 700 products. Hundreds of them are common to households. of antibacterial bar soaps and almost 100% of antibacterial liquid soaps with doses ranging from 0.1% to 0.45%. So we wanted to talk to someone in the healthcare industry to get their opinion on the risk and benefits of triclosine. Jen is a registered practical nurse at Royal Victoria Hospital in Barrie. She has worked in the healthcare industry for over 10 years and has seen how health scares such as the H1N1 virus and SARS have helped fuel the antibacterial industry. Triclosan is what we call a selectively toxic chemical. It works on bacteria by blocking the active site of the anole alkyl carrier protein reductase enzyme, or ENR, which is an essential enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. By blocking the active site, triclosan inhibits the enzyme and therefore prevents the bacteria from synthesizing fatty acid, which is necessary for building cell membranes and for reproducing. Since humans do not have this CNR enzyme, triclosan has long been thought to be fairly harmless to us. Under the appropriate settings and conditions, such, in, such as in hospitals, to prevent infections, triclosan has been proven to be effective but no current data demonstrates any extra health benefits from having any bacterial containing cleansers at home. In fact, a study by the FDA of over 200 healthy households found that those using antibacterial products did not have any reduced risk for symptoms of viral infection disease. In 2005, FDA advisory panel said triclosan containing soaps was no better at preventing illness than regular soap and water. Even the Center for Disease Control and Prevention stated that antibacterial soaps are not necessary in everyday use. Scientists have raised concern about triclosan for decades. According to a lawsuit filed in 2010 by the Natural De Resource Defense Council, the FDA first proposed regulating over-the-counter topical antiseptic drug products like triclosan in 1972, but never followed through. Then in 1978, the FDA proposed eliminating triclosan as an active ingredient in hospital scrubs and in hand soaps within a couple years, but again, never followed through. 2010, Congressman Edward J. Markey pressured the FDA to write regulations for antiseptic products like hand soap, including the use of triclosan. The regulation process that began more than three decades ago is continually being delayed. In the meantime, Mr. Markey has petitioned for a ban on triclosan in hand soaps, products that come in contact with food, and in products marketed to children. He raised valid concerns about the effects of repetitive daily human exposure to these antiseptic ingredients. People are knowingly and unknowingly exposed to triclosan, whether they like it or not. There are three points of entry for human exposure to triclosan, oral, dermal, and inhalation. Following oral administration of triclosan, absorption from the gastrointestinal tract is rapid and extensive. Data in one epidemiological study in humans indicates absorption to be at least 97%, or for the purpose of risk assessment, absorption has to be considered 100%. Rapid first pass metabolism greatly reduces it initially. However, the lipophilic properties of triclosan enhance dermal absorption and the percutaneous penetration is considerable. 
Following dermal application of triclosan containing products, absorption in humans was generally at least 3 to 7 percent, though one volunteer was observed to have 14 percent absorption for a 12-hour exposure, illustrating extensive human variability. Additionally, humans have li limited buccal absorption. Following normal toothpaste and mouthwash use, absorption was up to 14 percent of the amount that would have been absorbed in an equivalent dose that was ingested. Alarmingly, triclosan is distributed widely to organs and tissues and high levels detected in excretory and well-perfused organs, liver, kidney, gallbladder, GI, and lung, and evidence in rats also indicates enterohepatic recirculation. Dermal tests conducted on monkeys revealed an extensive distribution of triclosan and or its metabolites, and since human sampling has shown triclosan in urine, blood, and breast milk, it is probable to presume widespread distribution in humans as well. Triclosan is primarily excreted through urine, but is also found in lower concentrations in human species. Pharmacokinetic study of triclosan following oral ingestion found that the majority of triclosan is expelled within 72 hours of dose administration. It had a half-life ranging from 13 to 29 hours, and within 8 days, 80% of subjects reached baseline triclosan levels. And although no evidence currently exists to suggest it bioaccumulates in humans, not one of the subjects studied had a zero baseline level, even those who did not use triclosan-containing products. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, triclosan is now found in the urine of 75% of the population. Over 95% of the uses for triclosan are in consumer products that are disposed of in residential drains. In a U.S. geological survey study of 95 different organic wastewater contaminants in U.S. drains, triclosan was one of the most frequently detected compound and in some of the highest concentrations. In June 2006, it was reported by John Hopkins University Research that about 75% of the triclosan that people flush down their drains survives treatment at sewage plants, with most ending up in sludge spread on farm fields. According to the research, every year an estimated 200 tons of two compounds, triclocarbon and triclosan, are applied to U.S. agricultural lands. There is a great concern over the potentially negative effects triclosan has on aquatic ecosystems as well. To name one of the huge influences, triclosan is extremely toxic to algae, affecting algal communities both in structure and functioning capabilities, especially directly downstream from wastewater output. The implications of long-term effects is uncertain, but algae are oxidant producers and at the bottom of the food chain. Damaging their ability to function could potentially destroy balance in an aquatic ecosystem. Another environmental concern over triclosan is the dioxin-producing potential. Dioxins can cause many severe human health effects such as immune system weakening, fertility reduction, miscarriages, birth defects, and they are potentially extremely carcinogenic. The EPA has listed triclosan production as a possible dioxin source. In a contained study, researchers shined ultraviolet light into triclosan-containing river water and discovered that between 1 to 12 percent of triclosan was converted into dioxin, leading to the assumption that natural conditions could also produce and release dioxins. Additionally, a recent study examining sediment cores representing the last 50 years of Lake Pepin sediment showed that the four dioxins created by triclosan now represent about one-third of the total dioxins present. Triclosan production levels have increased by 200 to 300 percent in the last 30 years, while levels of other dioxins have fallen, in some cases as much as 90 percent. Triclosan has also been found to promote the formation of chloroform in chlorine-treated water. Chlorine can react with the natural organics in the water to produce trihalmethanes, chloroform being one of the most common. Although chlorinated water does not require triclosan to produce chloroform, a study conducted in 2007 demonstrated that in certain conditions, triclosan enhanced chloroform production by up to 40%. We spoke to Taisha about metabolic pathways of triclosan and how it relates to risk assessment. Triclosan is a phenyl ether or chlorinated bisphenol and is classified by its chemical structure as a polychlorophenoxin phenol. Due to its high solubility and low permeability, the FDA classifies it as a class 3 drug. 
The major metabolic pathways in humans and animals involves gluconoride and sulfate conjugation. Data in rodents indicates that the liver and high conjugating capacity for triclosan, while human and animal data demonstrate triclosan is metabolized to the gluconide and sulfate conjugate in the skin. Relative proportion of the metabolites varies depending on plasma ready state of triclosan and these conjugates combined with higher concentrations resulting in a shift from predominantly glucuride to predominantly sulfate conjugates. No different in metabolic patterns is seen between different human racial groups. However, a significant difference was observed in the rate of elimination between some African American volunteers compared to Caucasian volunteers. There is no data available to explain why this difference was observed, however. In vitro and in vivo research has led to some startling findings about effects on lab animals which could pose a potential for human toxicological effects. Some specific examples include disruption of the sex hormone pathways, which has a potential for imp impact human brain development, reproductive development, and onset puberty, myotoxicity resulting in nephrotoxicity, alternations to T4 concentrations which can cause neurosiological development in children and alterations in sex maturation. Some ecotoxological effects include changes in fin length and sex ratio in Japanese matakai fish, Although current data indicates that chronic health effects are considered low, the FDA and EPA are investigating whether it should be banned due to recent research indicating effects altering hormone regulation, development and reproductive toxicity, chronic toxicity, carcinogenicity, reduced immune function in children, and antibiotic resistance. As illustrated in the table, the dose response for small amounts of triclosan is startling. According to an article published by the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health, humans are chronically exposed through personal care products and pharmaceuticals at least once or twice per day. This doesn't include the amount found in drinking water. Currently, the acceptable daily intake in drinking water is 0.5 mg per kilogram of body weight per day. And while the maximum exposure is estimated to be more than 100 times less than the ADI, it is still a lipophilic compact pound that is persistent and accumulates in the environment. Trickle sand is not a chemical which should be used so ubiquitously. When it was first used as its initial application as a surgical scrub, there was no notable side effects in the environment or within the scope of public health. As more and more uses of triclosan are being applied in the commercially driven age of aggressively fighting infections, the opportunity to put triclosan under scrutiny has led to some frightening discoveries of its potential side effects. It has been proven that triclosan accumulates in the environment as well as in living tissue, humans included. Triclosan releases dioxins and chloroform into the environment that are known carcinogens, and dose responses are exhibiting some real threats to human and environmental health. The biggest point made though is that triclosan is not necessary to use on a commercial basis or be produced at its current rate. Even the FDA doesn't endorse the prolific use of triclosan.